possible because we are seeing royal milk on an alu card exp taking vengeance welcome to land of dawn in our very first best of five to kick things off here at the knockout stage is liquid echo on a blue site up against falcon esports on red now this is very uncharacteristic of me to be optimistic about an alu card but hey putting uh, brave smite on it and been building it semi tank might be good but now in mid JP and Sanji putting PX7 and Kid X down to well, a third of their health. Wow, that's a double TKO. I mean, I mean, Falcons Esports, they got to be real aggressive in the earlier stages. I mean, Royal Milk is not going to win this lane very easily. And for the most part of it, when it comes down to team fights, the only way I can see it happening is if the rest of the lanes are doing so well that Royal Milk can be the big cleanup rather than Dax. All right, so if you're saying the rest of the other lanes, mid and gold, not looking good because look, Benny's getting bullied out. Here we go, 2v1 up top. Oh, it's easy. Forcing out a vengeance from Royal Milk, and that's going to be it. First blood. Mm, instantly finding that chink in the armor and punishing it early. Like Wolf mentioned, level three, find that instant gank, and Liquid Echo are on the board. So far, uh, again, Sanford is incentivized to go aggressive, builds the casual Fury Hammer, and then can go ham from here. Like, you can just start just greeting out. Because <laughs> again, well, what's Alucard going to do? I mean, that's true, and he will need some time to scale, right? I ideally, he would like to snowball, but looking at the items and as well as the emblem build so far, like, I'm mostly curious about the duality of the Bennies of the Benny verse. Benny QT up against Benny on Harith as of right now. The Azure Blade instantly purchased, and uh, I think this, I mean, both sides want to win their lane. It's not just about hyper farming. Yeah, uh, but the only difference is Benny from Myanmar has to actually commit the fights. Benny Cutie from the Philippines can actually just look for the fight, send the SOD, and then join in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For now, they're going to take their time, and here's the first turtle dance of this game. Let's see how they approach it, because again, I'm not seeing level fours on supports just yet. Yeah, oddly enough, you mentioned the turtle dance, which is more of the dance we're seeing, less of the Lord dance, because those almost immediately turn into turns. They almost just always collapse into a team fight. But the turtle dance, look at this, it's a thing of beauty. Coming in, Sanford forcing PX7 back into that bush. Gets frozen a wee bit. Royal Milk taking control of that northern bush. Carl Deasy clean secure. Yeah, this is the scary part. Now that JP is already level four, at any point of time, he can initiate a fight that Liquid Echo can instantly capitalize on. And I think it might be towards this top side of the map. Oh man, Royal Milk, he's going to be taking a beating here. Oh wait, no, they transferred to the opposite side. They deny it. Yep, why walk? Uh, that's what's so scary about Liquid Echo here. They can basically call fights wherever, whenever. And given that they have a thousand gold lead with the very little effort they're putting in, it's dangerous, PX7. Put down half health, in goes Dax. JP from the side lane, jumping in the shortcut. Down goes Kid X, one more follows, Dax falls. An instant response from Liquid Echo. And I was already curious whether Sanji really wanted to get the metamorphosis from a Roger of all people with the IMU, right? Because there's so many other valuable alts, but he held onto it. You can see that he's utilizing the iframes. Keep in mind, when you use IMU, if there's the transform subtext underneath that alt, you get all the other abilities. Yep, and he joined the fight as if he was Dax, as if he was the Roger, and that just pushes forward Liquid Echo's momentum even more. Now 2K ahead of their opponents. There's a ooh, interesting engage up here on Kid X. It's so tough being Kid X, man. Of everyone, I think, so far, he might be the only one who's actually comfortable. Like He's the only one who can say, all right, I'm going to play defensive or offensive. When you say so, everyone else has to react to Liquid Echo. Mm, I think... Oh, man. I think it's going to be a little difficult here, but let, let, let's see what's happening across the map. All right. So far up top, Royal Milk is just holding his own. And again, Kid X is getting pushed out of his comfort compared to JP, right? But by JP, uh, who is just doing everything he can to make this gap even larger. Now a level ahead, half an XP bar. Sanji not even leaving this lane, man. Picking up that enchanted talisman. And confirmed, Sanford indeed does greet out 
first build in the Hunter Strike as the turtle spawns. Now, for anybody out there who's wondering, man, is Falcon Esports really running with Royal Milk on this Alucard to clear up confusion here? After investigation, and thankfully with Zipper in my ear telling me this, it is confirmed that FCON had made a human error and picked Alucard, so therefore they will continue the game with Alucard. And yeah, that's just the way it is. Uh oh, Kid X with the I'm offended. The fight continues. They take down Carl TZ. A 3v1 gank squad down bottom. Not much many kid can do. Not at least at five minutes. This does open up a big objective for the Burmese squad. Here's your critical call, TZ. And then we go back into the matchup up top. Oh, just as we resumed. That was BX7 taken down. What happened there? Yeah, I mean, his flicker isn't back up, unfortunately. He lost it pretty early on, but now, oh! The shortcut, JP says, let's go. Carl TZ continues to wail away at the turtle, respawned during the replay, and now Kid X, he can only hope and wish. Now he's gonna get punished. There's the knockup. Carl TZ gets his sweet, sweet revenge. The beauty of this, of all of this, is the fact that Falcon Esports are compensating a lot to make sure that they can actually make it to the later stages of the game where you actually feel relevancy and surprisingly enough royal milk is the one who breaks the tower on the top side of the map all right at least that is one thing that the alucard has uh, as much as it pains me to say he's very sustainable even with the brace line again we alluded to this earlier on compared to lapu lapu who has to actually land the skills and be active uh, in team fights with the bravest fighter and his iframes and damage reduction royal milk can just plant himself into the lane and do as he just did take tier one up top allowing for the rest of the map to open up for falcon esports mm -hmm. and i think that falcon esports I, I think this is a great way to kind of handle the situation despite the human error but px7 he's got to make sure that he minimizes his deaths and most importantly the battle spells need to be available uh oh down bottom i'm offended the stolen ult from sanji benny taken down and they're not gonna greet out they're gonna force back falcon esports as they penetrate into this oh no waves Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Great clear coming in from Benny, right? At least he knew, if I'm going to die, I'm not going to lose my battle spell. They're definitely going to die me if this wave is here and take my tier one. I might as well die, clear the wave, and guarantee that I can walk back in. That's long-term planning from Benny, one of the more veteran members of Falcon Esports. Dax spots Carl TZ there. Carl TZ obliges. Let's go. Dax just playing footsies. Yeah, they got to be really careful here. And I think what Liquid Echo is really good at is following up upon each other. Because I'm not going to lie, it's pretty difficult to land the chains sometimes, unless it's the enhanced chains. That's a different story. But when you do land that singular chain, the follow-up from the rest of Liquid Echo, it's overwhelming. Uh, could this be a pick here? Could Dax be looking to uh, bait something out? Because a lot of pressure on the bottom side of the map. If anything, Dax is one of the few who can actually do that. Low committal, can actually just like and pounce out of dangerous situations. Kid X forcing a fight here. Benny Q, oh! Nope. Benny at that. Benny Q just switches it up. Suddenly in the top lane, taken down Royal Milk. 1v1. And now the turtle, the last one on the map, secured here by Liquid Echo. As Falcon Esports just stays to their own side. This game is so fast paced. Like, both sides are struggling for tempo in their own way. Liquid Echo looking for more structures on the map, while Falcon Esports are trying to push and pull against them to see where exactly this pressure is going to be applied. Yeah, struggle is a relative term. Like, for Liquid Echo, it's more of perfection, it's more of a polishing of what they're actually doing. For Falcon Esports, man, they're playing with less than a full hand, if you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. they started with the Alucard got the early push and if you look at the stats between a Moscow and a Roger if there's a Roger on the map it should win more often than not but by the way the things are going seven to one about five thousand between both oh no. man I mean, people need to keep in mind that, like, Roger is flexible. It can go into the jungle, and it also can go into the gold lane. So that's why we have the theoreticals here and the number of matchups. 14 times we've seen this matchup, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in gold. So keep that in mind when we're looking at this data. For now, 60 seconds until the very first Lord spawns. And so far, with the 5k gold lead that Liquid Echo has, like, I'm expecting Falcon Esports to just play safe, wait to counter-engage. Just let it happen. All the more that they try to play with fire like this, calling out the shortcut. Benny once more in trouble. Benny wailing away, throwing out the spears. In comes the cavalry, literally, and they clap back. Down goes Benny Cutie. Dax going on hunting. JP up next, still alive, but just oh. barely in comes Carl Deasy with the chains. 
and they take one more down, make it another, serving up the human calculator, the apex predator, Sanford. Oh my goodness. Let's look at the replay one more time. As they pull away, the first initial engagers are already down, but Sanford makes sure that they look real juicy in this fight as they fall into the enhanced chains and turn the fight around. Honestly, just a breath of fresh air to save them that fight. That could have easily been four kills. Uh oh he wouldn't. No, don't do it. Don't greet out. This will right. punish Benny. There's no way Benny Cutie can survive that. But yeah, again, looked very, very uh, dangerous for Liquid Echo there. But little did we know there was an interception from uh, down bottom where Carl TZ would come through. And we're back at square one. Yeah, despite having a, a shutdown on to Benny Cutie, Falcon Esports back up against the corner, up against the ropes, could not even consider contesting that Lord. Mm -hmm. As of right now, I feel like the meta is so tempo-based, right? That's what a lot of these teams are trying to do. It's not about, like, sticking around these neutral objectives because it's really difficult to stand around the Lord now to play that Lord dance. So now it's about how much momentum can we generate, right? And more so, if somebody recalls, that might be just sacrificing the lane to a certain degree, right? That means it allows teams to set up for the potential dive, to cut off your waves, and really dictate where the fight is going to be on your side of the map. Which is one of the more smarter things uh, that I think the devs have gotten done here mm -hmm. in this current metagame. They've made team fights a little faster. They've made heroes move more around the map. And as you mentioned, a recall, that's as good as a technical knockout. Like, you're out of the fight unless you're like a Chip or like an Angela or a Moscow, which again is why these heroes are so in demand. You're out of the fight. That's it. You, you lost your uh, team that opportunity. Carl is stealing away the orange, depriving Falcon Sports of these resources. Another chains up behind. Kid X in trouble. Oh, no. The shortcut keeping him barely alive. And the Lord still swinging up top. Dax running through targets. Frigid ice from a PX7 clearing the waves, popping the holy shields. They continue the aggression. Well, this is interesting, though. Can they get the inhibitor? I feel like it, w it was quite a bold move initially when we saw Sanford flicker forward onto Kidex and hopefully trying to trade flicker for flicker. And I think Kidex did a wonderful job pulling backwards and still surviving because that battle spell is going to be the big difference in these upcoming fights. He held his ground. He held his and ground. And he needs this big ticket battle spell. It's what can allow for them to punish Liquid Echo even if they think they're safe, even if they're far from inhibitor range. Range, PX uh, Kid X can put them into turret range. I think that I think the term we're looking for is the counterplay ability that enables Falcon Esports to turn things around. But let's look at the gold distribution as of right now. In terms of minions, just whoa, whoa, whoa okay, that didn't seem 100% correct there. But let's see, Dax already with the endless battle. Oh no, oh no, the counter playability to the counter playability because <laughs> you pull JP, he brings the rest of Liquid Echo with him, pops the shortcut, and Sanford just pops right back out, like mm -hmm. just. Maybe 10, 15, 10, 15 feet away. It's like, 10, 15 feet. I'll just stay over here. Yeah, I know. I totally agree. And I think this is a great timing for TLPH because by the time that Lord spawns, JP is going to get his alt back up. And this is yep. what I'm talking about when, when it comes down to tempo, right? Being able to dictate the fight with some foreshadowing and foresight of future things to happen, like neutral objectives, is so very important. But let's look at this Alucard build for a second, right? They've already got the Brute Force Breastplate uh -huh. going traditionally to, as you mentioned, that semi-tank build. Yeah, uh, has the Queen's Wings, has the BFB, mm -hmm. and I respect that, you know? Game knows game, so if, if this is what he needs to build, if this is how he needs to play, so be it. Also rocking that Vengeance, again, we really haven't seen him last that much longer in fights. Uh, this this hero is just not built for this level of play. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're working with much less than they could. Now, the Lord just demolished here by Liquid Echo. As Benny Cutie works the opposite side of the map, Falcon Esports knows that this is the defense of a lifetime. Like, they just have to... They have to clear this Lord, and they have to save their base at least. Like, that's bare minimum. It's bare minimum for sure, but I definitely think that they haven't exactly set up checkmate angle in the most efficient way possible. However, however, even though they don't have checkmate angle, look at that EXP difference. Sanford just bought the Winter Crown, and I'm guessing that Liquid Echo, they're going to dive for an inhibitor. Yep, uh, again, you're, ab you're allowed to greet out in these kinds of situations. So he built the Hunter Strike first, went for a Winter Crown, and can now force a fight. Vengeance by Royal Mick already after the Enhanced Chains. 
top lane inhibitor taken out. The base has been penetrated. Mid and bottom gonna be up next. Lord still standing, taken care of by Falcon Esports. Good defense coming in from Falcon Esports. You sacrifice one inhib, don't worry. But now the second wave start to come through and it's now desynced. Step by step, Falcon Esports knows what they have to protect. They know how they can keep this fight going. Now there's an enhanced wave down bottom. Sanford looking to make it stay. Goes down now, the jump in, the response from PX7. Down goes JP, but where's the clap back? Dax jumping through, saves himself. Sanji with a stolen ult as well, reset. And Carl's easy looking oh. for one more. Pops the passive on the PX7. In comes Kid X after the conceal, sends Liquid Echo packing. Oh man, as much as I would like to say that this is an incredible defense from Falcons, they're missing two inhibitors, which is going to affect them in the next 85 seconds when the next Lord spawns. It's gonna be difficult to walk out, right? Because now Liquid Echo have so much tempo and they can keep on holding it against Falcon. Oh, you wanna walk up to the Lord? We'll just wait for the waves to push into your base. It's your choice. Yep, uh, I'll have to amend my statements about Sanford greeting out. It's actually him just bum rushing builds like he's just having such a good time an easy time on the map three zero and four on this lapu lapu that he was able to build not just a full hunter strike not just a couple of good defensive items but also the winter crown mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think there is a certain level of foresight here right because again he's already got the athena shield he knows that benny is going to be the big guy who chunks him out and dax yes he's already level 15 accelerated super fast into the game but if he stops the uh, the lycan pounce reset that's already a very big win for liquid echo it forces dax to actually take a step back and reconsider the options even if he trades one for one and that's just sanford we're talking about mm -hmm. what else the rest of liquid echo again jp a one-man initiation machine sanji just ever the versatile swiss army knife of both engage crowd control damage and then you have benny cutie who we really haven't seen much doing right so that means he's just a soon built artillery machine like we haven't he's only really been working on turrets i mean he has only been working on turrets but let's not forget the last time we were casting liquid echo i mentioned it before it's about the insurance policies and benny he's like he's up there he's just like we got the premium on this one he's got full build he also uh made sure that he has the winds of nature but at the same time his counterpart oh. benny from falcon esports he's full build that's right yeah so benny is also a force to be reckoned with has to be respected because mm -hmm. again yeah Sanford does have the Athena shield, but that can only last so long. He has to pick a target. It has to be PX7, it has to be Dax, or maybe even Benny, but it's just one of those at a time. I think the hardest part is that even if they want to get multiple people, if you commit too hard on PX7, right now he doesn't have his passive, but when it comes back up, that's when Liquid Echo really have to kind of shift their objectives. But at the same time, right, when we're talking about the Frigid Glacier, it is a large area that it covers. It's a huge AOE, especially once you're kind of funneled in towards the crystal. Which makes Liquid Echo's job uh, not impossible, but relatively difficult despite the draft having been compromised for Falcon Esports. Like, they are making the most of a bad situation. Now they're looking for the GG push. Mid lane up next on the docket. Massive Lord up top. That but then a half health out the three spears from Benny Cutie. A force of nature. Royal Milk is still holding on to his ult, holding on to his battle spell. Already oh. a little bit of a pull from Sanji. The stolen ult from... Kid X! And that's all very low members. Royal Milk falls. Lord has fallen as well. Sanford coming into the back line. Bravest fighter into three. Gets his immortality pop. The base is still standing, but taken down.